Hello, my name is Super Rogue of Magee Design, and welcome to my seminar about Extreme ZX Spectrum Size Code. So, what can you expect from this seminar? I will do a little introduction about the ZX Spectrum, then I'll be talking a bit about the Basimatic tools, I talk about some ROM routines and how to plot pixels on the screen, I'll make a minimal update loop and show you how to optimize it. Then I'll talk a bit about animation and sound, and the quest I had in chasing a magic start address that will help you save one byte. Then I'll talk a bit about exporting your file to tape or binary and how to load them. And finally, I will give you some resources to look at for further. Let's start with a quick introduction. I started size coding in 2020 with Marquee Design. And in that time, I developed various tiny intros for different platforms like MS-DOS, ZX Spectrum, Atari 8-bit, Atari ST, Fantasy Console, and various other platforms. Not only did I make intros for 256 bytes, but I also made intros for smaller sizes like 8, 16, and 32 bytes. So, do I think that design content is possible in these smaller sizes? Absolutely. And I hope that after this talk, you agree with me. Before we begin, let's introduce the ZX Spectrum. It was released in 1982, it has a monochrome display of 256 by 192 pixels and a 32 by 24 color map. It has a Z80 processor, calculator ROM and various ROM routines that you can use. Here you will see the register pairs that you can use with the Z80 processor. AF, BC, DE, HL and two index registers, IX and IY. It also has shadow registers. This is the ZX Spectrum memory map. It starts with 16K of ROM, followed by screen memory, as well as color run memory. Then a printer buffer, so system variables, a reserved area, and then the memory available for your program. Now let's talk about the Basimatic tool. It was created by Gasman as a ZX Spectrum live coding tool. It has an online editor, assembler, and emulator, all rolled into one. It is great for quick prototyping and extreme size coding. Here you will find links to the GitHub as well as the Basmatic tool itself. So let's check out this tool. Here we are. This is the Basimatic tool. Here you can see some Z80 assembler code and here we will do some of the programming in the rest of the seminar. We'll get back to this soon. Let's talk about the ROM routines available in the ZX Spectrum. We have a plot pixel routine where B and C registers hold the X and Y values and you can plot a one bit pixel at a time. That's it, pixel or no pixel. There's also a draw line routine that draws a line from the last plot pixel with delta X and Y. It's far from ideal to use and it needs calculator on to set up the line delta X, Y and the signs. There is an option to set BC, the delta X, Y and DE register sine xy directly, but this is also a bit of a hassle. Also, both routines destroy the registers and crash outside the screen border, as well as when the y value is bigger than 175. Now let's get back to Basimatic and make ourselves a Sapinski triangle. We have our weight loop here, and we set up a drawing loop right now. We load bc with 175 by zero and now we make a draw loop or what's like to call a frame loop we load the accumulator with c we end it with b and only if it results in a zero we'll draw the pixel otherwise we'll skip to the next pixel let's draw a pixel push and pop BC, and we call our draw plot routine. Here's the label for the next pixel. The next X value. Jump back to the frame loop when it's not reached. And we do the same for the Y value. And let's see what we have here. There we go, a nice Sapinski triangle. But this is still 19 bytes, 
So we can make it a bit smaller, which we'll do by abusing the fact that BC will be set with the org address. So we can just put it here, and now we're at 16 bytes. And this is similar to the Sapinski triangle as submitted by Delton of Joker at the previous lab flight. And here we have the code once again in our slide. And using plot routines is okay for 16 byte and 32 byte intros, but if you want to go lower, there's really one way you can go, and that is using the color RAM uh, for your purpose. Now let's look at a minimal update loop for a color RAM update. We'll go back to Basimatic once again, go back to the start and set up a little frame loop. Okay, we need a destination pointer that is set to uh, the color RAM. We need a counter. Then we load A with C, and then we fill the destination pointer, the color RAM, with the value of A. We increased the pointer and we decrease the counter and we jump when not zero to frame loop. Uh, we call update loop. Update loop. And here we have a sort of minimal color RAM code. We're now at 14 bytes. So how can we optimize this loop any further? What we need to do is get rid of these two loop structures where we use BC as well as DE and replace it for a single loop. And the way we do that is we set this to a slightly higher number and we get rid of the BC counter and only use DE. That means that we will set the A with the E value and not the C counter value anymore. And what we need to do is call this command, res2, d, which resets the uh, second or third bit of D, making it loop over the color RAM area. So when we do this, you can see the code is nearly identical and we're down to 10 bytes only. And this is how that works. You can see when we keep increasing the DE pointer counter, at some point the D value will flip over to 5C hexadecimal and it will set bit number two or bit number three, depending on how you count. With the command res two comma b or two comma d, we will reset that bit back to zero. So it will loop back to five eight, which is the start of our color RAM. And this way we can keep increasing the screen pointer while still remaining in the color RAM. So is there anything else that we can do? For sure. We can replace the DE back to BC. So let's do that first. BC, B, C, BC, and BC. Here we go. Still the same code. And now we can abuse the fact that BC will be set with the org address. So we can put the org address to the same value. And we have our code down to seven bytes, which is great. So let's talk about adding animation and sound. There are a few ways we can add animation. We can use the blinking bit, the top bit in the uh, color attribute to make our colors uh, blink. We can use an outside loop structure with a manual frame counter, but this is quite expensive. We can add values to unused registers over time. And if these values are a bit off, we can get some kind of animation. We can read the frame counter directly, load A, and then uh, 23672, but it's a three cost of three bytes, so it's a little expensive. We can use a pseudo random by loading A with R, two bytes. And if you want to generate sound, we're using out 254, A which is also two bytes. So these are ways to add sound and uh, animation to your visuals. 
So when this is all said and done, we, uh, there are still very few things that you can do in the bytes that are remaining. So I went on a hunt, on a quest, to find a magic address that will cover both my need of setting BC with a nice starting value uh, to run over my cover RAM, as well as allowing me to save one byte in the end. So with that in mind, there are a couple of things that we need to have. We need, it needs to work on different machines, real hardware and emulators. It needs to be somewhere within the color RAM range. It's 5800-5FFF. It cannot be in color RAM area, otherwise I would, the visuals would uh, destroy our program. It cannot be in the printer buffer. It cannot be in a basic or tape loading scratch area. So there's a lot of places where I cannot place my code. And if we want to save that extra byte, we want to replace the final jump with, uh, with, a, with a byte value, it needs to end on a stable relative jump offset that works for eight or 16 byte intros. So that will be somewhere between F0 and F8. Therefore, it cannot be in an unused areas with all zeros. So the only thing left is walking a minefield and claiming eight sequential bytes that do not destroy any important system variables in the 5C00 to 5C FF area. Here are some examples of uh, system variables, uh, sequential system, system variables that are inside this area. So as you can see, almost all of these are, are useful in one way or another or are needed or are externally updated. So we need to find a free spot that also gives us a, uh, that also ends on a byte that is between F0 and F8. So I went on and spent many hours in debuggers, memory viewers, and testing on various machines. And finally, I found the magic address at 5CB3. Since BC is also set to this, be a bit careful on your first write. And with this address, we can change the uh, jump relative to frame loop into just the jump command, which is DB18 hexadecimal. And this saves us one byte. At the time of writing, the uh, magic address is not supported in Bosomatic yet, so uh, we'll have to wait for that. But it works on many different machines that I've tested and many emulators, and it's a stable address that you can use. So with all these tricks in mind, you are ready to write your own tiny intro on the ZX Spectrum. Once you're satisfied with the effect, then it's time to create a binary and tape file for distribution. A thing that people do often do is uh, minimize the, si the text on screen by using a blank file name, and this is perfectly fine. But did you also know that it's possible to save headers with control characters, even in ZX Spectrum Basic? So for example, you can give a control character that goes to the top left corner and then starts clearing uh, with spaces. And this way you can have a sort of uh, clean screen uh, at the start of your intro. This is not necessary, but it's a nice addition for distribution. So for Love by 2024, I made two intros to showcase eight byte intros with like uh, a design to them. And the first one is, we are watching you since you were eight. And despite the creepy title, this is actually an 8-byte remake of the very first 16-byte intro released for the ZX Spectrum by Skuryu from 2008. And coincidentally, it's also celebrating the 16th year anniversary of this intro. Here it is. And the other intro I made is an 8-byte version of my 16-byte intro from Love by Turbo, Colt and Coral. So, as you have noticed, this talk sort of assumes that you know a little bit about the ZX Spectrum and or Z80 Assembler. But if you're new to this and you want to learn more, 
There are a few books and websites that I can recommend. The first book is Mastering Machine Code on your ZX Spectrum. The other one is the complete Spectrum ROM disassembly. Then of course there's the excellent Gasman seminar from Lovebyte 2021 and the accompanying code and slides. You can always ask on the Size Coding Discord, there's a specific Z80 channel where you can ask your question. And you can look at the sizecoding.org wiki that also has an area dedicated to the Z80 and the ZX Spectrum. Well, that's it for me. I hope you like my seminar and enjoy Love Byte 2024. Bye!